Hello everyone and we hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F-16 C and we're looking at air to ground strafing with the gun. The gun is a Mike 61A1 Vulcan cannon. It's a 20 mil six barrel Gatling gun. In terms of ammunition, if we go into armament menu here, we can have ammo in terms of a percentage, in terms of quantity, gun ammo type. We can have tracer high explosive incendiary, non-tracer high explosive incendiary, armor piercing, target practice tracer, high explosive armor piercing, it's PGU, and target practice tracer, that's PGU. We've got very lightly armored targets today, so we're just gonna go for high explosive incendiary tracer. Now we can do this ground strafing with or without the lightning pod, but we can get extra accuracy with the lightning pod for laser ranging. So that's what we're gonna to do today. Request refueling. The gun is internal and you are automatically equipped with it. But the TGP has to be set up, but we'll cover that in another video. So next we're gonna catch up in the air looking for targets. Okay, we're in the air now searching for targets. So we want to have our master arm on in the opposition when we're ready to fire our weapon. Our laser arm is gonna be on as well. This is only if you're going for the T-Pod method, like we are. Uh, next we're gonna to go to air to ground here. Next, assuming that we're already on the SMS page like we are here, then we're gonna go air to ground. It's gonna automatically, in this case, select the gun. In strafe mode, we can see that the gun is ready, that the gun has 51 times 10 amounts of rounds in it, so that's gonna be our ammo counter. Here is our pilot selected in range queue, currently selected at 4,000 feet slant range. That will give us an indication that we are in range to fire, and we can change that, and I like to change that to 6,000 feet today. So I'm going to press on it there, 6,000, enter, or backspace there. So we've changed our user to find in range queue 6,000, and our system is ready there. So everything in this MFD is ready to fire. Next, we have to look at our symbology. So I'm going to get in an opportune position there. So if we start on the left, we can tell that we're armed here. We can tell that we have our laser ready to use here. It will only actually be firing once it is flashing. To allow it to fire, we need to press and hold this. It's the first detent of the trigger. And to actually fire the gun is the second detent of the trigger. I don't have two detents on my trigger, so I'm gonna press and hold a separate button for the lasing. Next, we can check that we're in strafe mode here. Next, very importantly, is our slant range. Our slant range is told to us in two ways. One of those ways is here. This is where it tells us in miles. Our slant range from us here, drawing through our pipa there to intercept the ground, is currently 5.6 miles. Once it gets to about two miles, then we actually get a walk over and use a different type of ranging, but we'll go through that in a minute. Here is our path marker as ever. That's where we're actually traveling to. Here is our bore site gun cross. This is where our gun is actually going to fire but bearing in mind that the bullets are going to dip they are going to be computed to impact where this pipit is this is a type of ccip constantly computed impact point targeting so wherever this pipa here intersects the ground is where the bullets will hit this is our strafing reticle here and it's designed to tell us the ranging so that there is 12,000 feet from us slant range again to the ground intercept that's 9,000 feet that's 6,000 feet that's 3,000 feet and that again gets to naught uh, and it starts again at 12,000 feet. It will continuously unwind for every 12,000 feet. 12,000 feet is about two miles. So the way I like to do it is use this here until two miles, then move over to this here. The way we actually tell the range is the ranging clock inside, as I like to call it. It's actually this marker here. So it starts at 12,000 and works its way around all the way back to zero as it unwinds, if you like. Next, we have the in-range queue. That is the queue that we set down in the MFD, currently 6,000 feet, and it's sitting here at the 6,000 foot point. It's just a marker to say that when the ranging clock gets past it, then we're in range to fire. Back to our slant range here, there are four different ways, or technically five different ways actually, that the F-16 can calculate this. And we can tell which mode by the letter at the front. Currently, it's Foxtrot. That means it's using the fire control radar to calculate this point, which is standard practice. The reason that we're using the laser method is that we can get an extra accuracy of the slant range calculation here within an extra few feet to give us extra accuracy for the gun. And the same will work for the rockets and the CCIP bombs as well. In terms of dive profile, then we want to dive from at least 6,000 feet AGL. Generally speaking, the higher, the better that we're gonna come down from because the higher, the more time we've got to arrange to spot the target 
and arrange the attack speed wants to be around 450 it's just an optimal attack speed for this kind of aircraft pitch for the dive wants to be around 20 degrees the way we do that is essentially when we're aiming at the target this path marker here wants to be down at the minus 20 degree position so that's 10 15 and 20 down there now that can take a while to get used to but i'll show you a little technique for doing that and that's it just pull the two trigger detents when we are in range i'm going to go probably a little bit past 6000 just to make sure and that's it keep an eye on our ammo there and let's get on with it so first let's spot the targets and then set up our dive ah target spotted four times su-27s on the apron right i'm turning in now so we want to get a good distance a good four five miles away from the target uh, what we don't want to do is is rush and that's just about going to do it i'm going to dive from i'm up 12,000 feet so plenty of altitude here more than i need we step up the gas get up to 450 knots when we get into the dive the aircraft will speed up naturally so what we'll actually do is come down on the throttle as we get into our dive okay and we go i like to zoom right in like this for maximum maximum aiming accuracy so we're going to position our pipper over the target note that the ranging clock is winding down but because we're above two miles not that important at the moment we'll just continue unwinding we're at four miles so we're going to have another rotation of the ranging clock before we actually go into fire i'm going to start lasing now press and hold you can see it flashing now and we're about to hit 12,000 feet slant range okay and now we're going to go all the way until we're in range and fire hit I think I um, got too excited and I sped all the way up to 600 knots there. That is bad practice. We want to keep it 450 if we can. Two flankers down. Note the massive spread of bullets in this gun. This is not a particularly accurate weapon for armour targets because you need to get direct hits. It's really only useful for light armour. Um, we do have an armour-piercing round, but again, to actually get hits on a tank is quite hard, we found because of the spread you need to be very close and close is dangerous so we've got 43 uh, sorry 430 rounds left that's plenty so we're going to forward a nice big strafe next it's going to get a little more distance so i'm going to concentrate a bit more on our ingress uh, dive pitch because uh, i was so busy talking last time i didn't get to talk about the pitch and turning now i should be able to do a better one this time okay, so if we look at our pitch indicator i'm just going to pause here rc you can see that uh, if we concentrate a bit more on the pitch this time that we are currently well above 20 or minus 20 degrees pitch so we're going to come in too steep about 25 degrees at the moment so the way we've got of arresting that uh, to bring the pitch down is actually to take our path marker a lot further down to steepen the dive and that means when we pull back on target the uh, actual pitch towards the target will be less so let me just kind of show you what i mean if i just go unpause now for a second here we go so i'm actually going to put my nose underneath the target for just a few seconds and then back up plenty of time to think about this and then back up we should be a bit closer to 20 not perfect as you can see but a bit closer in fact that's going to be about 20 there yeah that's okay happy with that start uh, laser ranging zoom in 12,000 feet in range fire important not to get target fixation uh, we don't want to get down to a below you know kind of 1500 feet at which point we've got a good chance of whacking the ground go for one more attack or maybe one of the big bombers or something it's a good idea generally if there's known defenses to set a flare program going out to countermeasure flare program but we've not got that set up today so we're going to go straight in this time rather than going out for a few miles it means we're going to have less time to set the bird up so we're going to go head down a bit because we're a little too steep at the moment a little more power okay we're going to be bang on 20 degrees this time what we're going to do is this time a slightly different technique we're going to walk we're going to walk the pipper up the screen to hit that bomber or airliner whatever it is laser ranging on wait for the ranging fire up hit happy with that so that's shown the ground strafing different types of ammo for different vehicles different types of slant range for different vehicles you want to kill a tank you've got to get 2,000 feet or less you've got to be really really close uh, you want to kill big unarmored vehicles like that then uh, a 6,000 up to 6,000 it's going to be okay so we're Winchester here we're going to take our arms off and that's it I uh, hope that was useful see you later